Today, let's talk symbolism. When I say pyramid, you think. When I say Statue of Liberty, you think. Okay, now if I say dragon to someone from China, they may think of a dragon blood, which, by the way, in China is a byword for someone who does big things. If I say Great Wall, I'll bet my last euro, and it will be my last euro, not on them saying, hey, thanks, but on you imaging, picturing an image of this feat of engineering. So today on Open China, we say, if you got it, tote it. If I say lucky cloud, then the average Joe will probably think of this classical doodle. But there is one item about which most folks don't have the foggiest. In front of Tiananmen stand two columns of white Chinese jade. Apart from Chairman Mao's portrait, they're the only decorative items on the entire square. Now, if you take a tour to China and you come to Tiananmen Square, your tour guide may well tell you that these are symbols of Chinese culture. China's youngsters will be familiar with this particular pencil. And there's also one of China's most common toothpastes. Mm -hmm. Now, for all of China's most famous brands, they've incorporated this totem. Why, then, do these columns represent China so? It's said that they first appeared over 4,000 years ago, and they certainly weren't as few in number. Indeed, they combine function and form. Originally, they looked like this, and they were made of wood. Now, is it me, or do they look like something familiar? Right, in ancient times, totems were... That's it, road signs. And in terms of today's road signs, they still bear a very strong resemblance. Not only that, but apart from looking like road signs, they were also suggestion boxes. Folks back in the days of China's yore were not online and couldn't really send helpful hints to the palace inbox. So instead, they wrote down their ideas with a chisel or a knife on the column's post. Not only that, but there was another function, and that was for communication by the ruling powers to the common folk. So for that reason, it was called a liable post. Let me explain. Oh, but I should probably remind you that if you want to communicate with higher powers, then coming to China and sticking a note on the Tiananmen totems is probably not going to achieve the desired result, you know? Just saying, it's probably a bad idea. Anyway, today's totems are far removed from the functions of their forerunners. It symbolizes the ancient belief that heaven and earth were two distinct places. Very important, this. The round crown at the top symbolizes the undertaking of the gift of the heavenly mandate. The clouds and the dragons symbolize the fortune and power of the ruler. On one side are crouching beasts known as Hol. One is facing towards the interior of the palace and one is facing outwards. Why? The one facing outwards is exhorting the emperor to deal efficiently and quickly with external matters and come home as soon as he can, whilst the other facing inwards is reminding him to keep his toys tidy, not play around too much within all the fun of the courts. Kind of like a pair of nagging aunts, but for the regally well-behaved. So now they have one more function, which is keeping an eye on naughty emperors. Smart totem. These two totems are both over 10 meters tall, almost a meter wide, and they weigh about 20 tons. That's about 330 mees, and um, four Yao Ming's tall. Seeing as these kinds of totems started out over 2,000 years ago and originally were wooden structures, they are often known as forever poles. Today, however, they're known as Hua Biao, or literally, China signs. Biao, in this sense, simply means sign or show, as in show the way. The interesting part of this is that Hua as a character represents China, even though the word for China in Chinese doesn't use this character. So it could be suggested that this early Hua refers to anything that captures the eye with its grace and radiance. So it makes sense that it's been revered as a symbol of blossoming beauty ever since ancient times. So in order to give a more regal name to something which has come to represent Chinese culture over the years, the forever pole became the flower sign. Hua Biao holds the weight of tradition and history as a sign of authority. So it's a very close relation with Chinese culture. So much so that it represents China in its purest form. And I'll bet that last euro, which I still can't quite get rid of, on the next time you watch a parade or ceremony on Tiananmen Square, you'll be like, totem, totem. So we hope you enjoyed making the show. We love doing it for you. Do leave a comment, hit like and subscribe if you want to. Whatever you do, until next time, Keep it open.